all right new drake is out and uh yeah he just released for all the dogs and um this album has been kind of cooking for a while um you know uh he released her loss last november and uh yeah so now we're left with this uh this is a very bloated um drake album this runs us an, an hour and 25 minutes um with 23 songs on it um a couple of those being interludes and we start off with the very melodic and r&b flavored um virginia beach which is probably one of my favorite tracks off the album um i like the very depressing tone in drake's voice when he's trying to deliver something here and um yeah even though this album is not like his take care record um per se i do enjoy what he has to deliver vocally on here um i don't know how many people favor this track compared to me but i think it's one of the better ones on here and then we get amen with tizo touchdown who just released his new album not too long ago um these are touchdowns been featured on quite a bit of big records this year also on travis scott's utopia um and yeah i'm a big fan of this track although i do believe that um tizo carries this i'm not a big fan of drake's bars as much as i am with tizo's and then we get another feature from 21 savage on calling for you where 21 savage isn't delivering anything new this is everything we've heard from 21 savage whether it be on her loss or something in that <coughs> nature um yeah he's not delivering anything we haven't heard before and uh right after that we get fear of heights which people believe drake is taking shots at rihanna where he keeps mentioning the word anti and he's talking about this girl right um i don't know too much about it um lyrically because you know um whatever but i uh, yeah I, I i don't know exactly who he's referring to it it's more than likely a diss track to rihanna but um i'm not uh too into the drake drama where he's constantly attacking people for um who he hasn't really had too much to do with in years i mean rihanna is like she has kids she's married drake is a kid um <laughs> i don't know uh why he would bring up old drama like that but um, then we move on to Daylight, which he, um, you know, has a son, uh, Adonis, featured at the back half of the record um, on this one. And Drake is delivering some pretty nice bars on here, but um, the, the the bar from Adonis at the end is um, very uh, fun to listen to, um, you know, for um, just being, you know, um, a, a little kid. I mean, he, he does carry the song quite a bit. And, of course, then we get the long-awaited J. Cole and uh, Drake song, collab song, first-person sh first shooter. Um, a very, very good song, I'd say, in terms of its beats and the bars that J. Cole has to bring on here. Um, one thing I do kind, kind of find repetitive is how they're, they're kind of just talking about, like, the significance of this song, saying we're on a song so it's just as big as the super bowl which i understand like you know it's it's big for what it is like it's drake and j cole like these are two of the biggest people or like rappers of the 2010s along with kendrick lamar and kanye west but um do i love that part of the song no i think it gets a little bit repetitive although i do love what j cole has to bring here and then we get one of uh, the most favorite features on this record. Um, I don't give a fuck with Drake featuring Yeet. And a lot of people seem to like what Yeet has to bring to here. I'm not, I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. I do think it's a little, being a little like bit blown up in a way. Like I'm not loving this song. It's not it's something I have on, I've had on constant replay since Friday when the, album dropped but it's it, it it brings you know a nice flavor per se right and uh then we get slime you out with SZA and this is one of my favorite tracks from the uh, album it was released as the lead single going into this um I like what SZA has to bring I think her vocal performance is really good as it always is because it's fucking SZA but um yeah 
one of my favorites on here. Um, Drake does slog it out a little bit, but, you know, for a SZA and Drake collab, it's as good as you can get. Um, and then we have Bahamas Promises, where Drake is just talking about his Bahama trip getting ruined. Um, not too big of a fan of that. Um, Drew or Picasso is kind of where this album started to fall for me. Um, you know, uh, I wasn't a big fan of the song, and then, like, right after that, it picks up a little bit with Members Only with Party Next Door. Um, it, it, it's a nice track. Um, Drake and Party Next Door usually always deliver something good, so I wasn't expecting to hate this track by any means. In fact, I think it was one of the better ones on the record. Um, but yeah, you know, not too much, um, going on after Drew Picasso, because right after that, we get What Would Pluto Do, which I just found to be very very minimal i wasn't a fan um then we get all the parties with chief keef um this of course samples some chief key stuff and then actually has chief keef on the song um it's fine i like chief keef but you know i wasn't like head over heels for this song and then we get possibly the best song on here and seems to be everyone's favorite it's 8 a.m charlotte um, Drake has bars on here. All his, like, AM, PM songs always go really, really hard. They always have a strong delivery. And, yeah, I was a big fan. And then we get Gently, which is probably my least favorite song on the album, featuring Bad Bunny. Drake is speaking Spanish at the beginning, and then Bad Bunny delivers his most basic Bad Bunny bars. Um, you know, it's all done in Spanish, and then randomly Bad Bunny will say, like, one line in English. I wasn't a fan, um, of this song at all. And then we get, uh, Rich Baby Daddy with, uh, Sexy Red and SZA. I get it, it's a club song, but like, do we really need it on the record? Uh, no, it did bring it down a notch. I don't think it's as bad as the Bad Bunny song, but still not anything to revisit. And then we get, um, the Little Yachty, um, you know, collab with Drake, Another Late Night. I, I like Yachty's vocals on here, I don't necessarily think there's any bars to pick up from here, but, um, it's, it's, it's okay for what it is. And we close out with Polar Opposites, which is just an average um, Drake filler track. This record pretty much conveys to me just Scorpion and um, Certified Lover Boy 2.0, 3.0 at this point. Um, am I going to like finish, go to this record and finish it from front, front to back after this? Maybe one more time just to get my full thoughts, which is kind of what this review is for like see if maybe something changes and then i can do a redux but th the thing is right now i'm not feeling the record that much it, the, drake has to stop making his records go like 90 95 minutes long no one needs to sit through all this we don't need another scorpion we don't need another certified lover boy give us something like a nothing was the same or a take care like maybe drake is past those days but you know give us something similar don't don't give us as much filler give us 40 minutes or 60 minutes of something right don't stop giving us 90 minute track lists we don't want this um i'm giving this record like a five um out of ten it's it's not drake's best it's not his worst but it's not something i'm going to be revisiting often especially from front to back and that's it uh, let me know what you thought about this record until then i'm out